Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you again. Uh, we already dived to um, the Old Testament theology uh, by starting last time about uh, the introduction part, the introduction part, introducing theology, uh, introducing what's Old Testament theology, and also uh, within the Old Testament theology, there are different kind of barriers and historical background, historical development and, the ori and historical uh, progress uh, and the methods and the tools uh, we saw what are the methods, what are the tools of Old Testament theology uh, and also uh, we saw the approach, uh, different kind of approaches in Old Testament theology uh, Old Testament, the meaning of Old Testament theology, uh, the barriers, uh, historical, literal, and uh, theological and hermeneutical uh, barriers, uh, we saw all of them. Uh, then uh, we see uh, after our introduction, uh, nature, uh, crater and creation. Uh, we see creator and creation in the second section after introduction. Uh, creator, who creator is, uh, what is the nature of the creator, what is the attribute of the creator, what is the part of the creator, uh, what is the ability of the wisdom, the majesty, and the beauty of creator. Uh, we see it's uh, his. Uh, attributes, his names, his uh, nature, uh, and the different kind of theological arguments, cosmological argument, theological argument, and also there are ontological arguments. Uh, so uh, we see all of them in the last section, and also about creation, creation in the Pentateuch, creation in the wisdom literature, creation in uh, uh, historical books, creation in uh, wisdom literature. So uh, we see the beauty of creation in Genesis 1 and 2, how God creates within the creation. We see the magnificence of God, the majesty of God, the power of God, the beauty of God. Uh, and also the purpose of creation is uh, to glorifying God, to showing up God. Uh, God he has a desire to worship, to glorify, to obey by uh, his creation. So uh, we saw about creation. After that, we see about um, humanity. Humanity is the children of creation, the children of nature. Uh, him, about him, humanity, uh, within the humanity part, humanity as a creature, humanity as a thinking being, humanity as a religious being, humanity as a free being, uh, humanity has uh, uh, in, uh, the image of God within him, rooted the image of God in the life of humanity. Uh, we see in we, we see this in uh, method uh, missiology class, in the mission class, we see, uh, we say that uh, the imago Dei, the imago Dei, imago Dei, the glory of God within the individual. We have spirits, we have soul, we have uh, flesh, we are one body, uh, personality, we our personality. So uh, after that, we see a covenant, a covenant, a covenant is a contract agreement between two parties, relation, union, and uh, their fellowship uh, depicted or portrayed by the agreements that they have. So the people of God in the book of, uh, the book of, uh, uh, in Old Testament books or narratives, uh, we, we see uh, the agreement between God and different kind of individuals or figures in the Old Testament narrative. Uh, for example, Adam, where there is covenant of God with Adam in order to save and in order to give him uh, eternal life. Uh, we call this a covenant of grace. And also after his fall, 
covenant of work God gave and command or made agreement with Abraham, uh, Adam, then uh, we see uh, Abrahamic covenant, Mosai covenant, Noahic covenant, and also uh, Mosai covenant, uh, uh, Abrahamic covenant, um, uh, different kind of covenants. Uh, after that, we start about uh, uh, endowment and uh, endowment abuse and also about uh, uh, the recovery plan of God. Uh, we started last time already uh, about the land. Land is the gift of God. The land is the promise of God. There is a regression and rules to live uh, the, 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 the gifts that God gave for Israelites and also the loss of land. So. Uh, there are different kind of scriptural verses to indicate them, especially Genesis 17 indicates the promise of God, how God promised Israelites uh, to give land uh, when he uh, came out of uh, their family, his family. Uh, God promised Abraham in Genesis 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, we see the promise of God uh, again and again, especially in Genesis 17, God promised Abraham, and so Abraham, God promised not only for Abraham, for his descendants to give the land uh, that is unique for his people, unique for the covenant people. Uh, so we uh, saw it uh, seriously and uh, about the covenant uh, and the laws of God because of the loss is, because of the wrath, because of the judgment, because of the days of the covenant people is because of disobedience uh, that people didn't live according to uh, the regulation and the rule of uh, God uh, gave them. So uh, we already see, especially in Genesis, uh, I mean in Isaiah 11, 1 after 2, God uh, promised again in order to bring up people from their loss, from their dispersed land. Uh, as I told you last time, uh, Adam expelled because of, because of his sin, expelled because of his sin uh, from Eden. Uh, just like that, God uh, expelled the people of Israel from their land to the Babylon, and uh, they sp spread different kind of places uh, out of their land. That is the, that is the reason, uh, because of their disobedience of God. Uh, then uh, after land, uh, we see about sin and evil. Uh, evil is uh, uh, the violation of the will of God. Evil is uh, the violation of the purpose of God. Uh, the uh, violent activity of the purpose and the plan and the program of God is evil. So we see different kind of uh, ideas about sin, sin uh, uh, and evil. There is, uh, by the way, I didn't mention last time, uh, evil, uh, uh, moral evil and natural evil uh, in your material. The moral evil is, uh, uh, the moral evil came from uh, our uh, disobedience of God. The natural evil comes from not from our quality of obey, obey, obey or disobey God, but it, it came from the nature, from the, it might be uh, the sickness, it might be death, it might be uh, uh, different kind of catastrophes, uh, earthquake, uh, flood, uh, those are uh, natural evil. Uh, so sin has its own, uh, its own, uh, consequence and origin uh, we see uh, in Genesis 3 is the word the origin or uh, as we know there is uh, evil uh, uh, and uh, evil atmosphere or the atmo our atmosphere uh, polluted because of the fall of angels so there is evil there uh, so uh, yeah, humanity has uh, the obligation to live uh, to finish uh, to accomplish the purpose of God within this atmosphere, this evil atmosphere, by uh, the help of and grace of God. 
uh, so uh, after sin and evil, uh, we see uh, about uh, worship, worship of God, worship. The only one who God is the regulator, uh, he regulates how we worship. Uh, we see uh, the regulation of that. We took the worship regulation. God sees how we worship. God sees where we worship. God sees why we worship. Uh, we have to focus our worship, our prayer, our prayers, our fastings towards God, not to circumstances. Uh, Israelite, uh, Israel, the, the Israel people, the Israelites uh, saw the pagan worship style and they uh, grieve God. Uh, they invite the wrath of God to their selfish because of the abuse of worship, because of their disobedience. Uh, so worship is uh, uh, worshiping or appreciating uh, God and God only. So after worship, uh, we saw last time uh, about uh, uh, priesthood, uh, priesthood ministry. Uh, priesthood is uh, a ministry uh, in Old Testament. There are three kinds of ministries, priesthood ministry, a kingship ministry, and also uh, 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 prophetic ministry. But uh, we saw about the priesthood ministry in our module. Uh, by the way, in the priesthood or ministry, they have their own uh, regulation, I mean, uh, opportunities, or they have a gift, uh, they have privileges, uh, they have uh, blessings uh, being uh, a priesthood in Old Testament time. Economical pr uh, privilege, so social privilege, and a spiritual privilege. They are spiritually blessed. They took a chance opportunity from God. They selected, they called to being uh, a servant of God, a priest of God uh, for the nation. This is a spiritual blessing and it's also social. The society respects them, the Levites. Uh, because, of them, because of that, they gave offering for the Levites, for Aaron, uh, for priests. Uh, so uh, in the priesthood ministry, uh, we saw uh, the priesthood ministry in different uh, part of the Bible. Uh, within that, uh, Saul, in historical books, abused the worship style. Uh, as, uh, the, it is not the faction of Saul uh, uh, sacrificing or working the priesthood or activity, but the priesthood faction is the faction is the faction of priests. But uh, King Saul, Saul did uh, that so that God uh, warned him uh, through uh, Samuel uh, and also uh, Jeroboam in the book, in historical books, he commits uh, uh, a type of worship that is contrary to uh, God's way of uh, uh, rule and regulation, so God punished. So now we are going to see uh, uh, little thing about uh, a few things about uh, the next uh, class uh, about sacrifice and also about uh, uh, redemption uh, later uh, uh, because of time I will be uh, quick uh, about community and also uh, uh, prophets so sacrifice According to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, sacrifice is a complex and comprehensive term. In its simplest form, it may be defined as a gift of God. It is a presentation to deity of some material object, the possession of the offer as the act of worship. It may be to attain, restore, maintain, or to celebrate friendly relation with the deity. The purpose of sacrifice could be total self-surrender to God, thanksgiving, or a form of appeasement. Oh, so uh, it indicates total self-surrender. When we sacrifice for God something, uh, especially in the Old Testament, it indicates that to the total uh, surrender, the total submission of ourselves, the total submission of our family, the total uh, submission of our uh, nation to God. History of, history of sacrifice in the Old Testament. Cain and Abel, uh, Noah, Abraham, and Job. Uh, so they, uh, they, saw, they indicate 
the, the sacrifice. So there are two, uh, there are sacrifice, two kinds of sacrifice, the bloody and the unbloody sacrifice. The bloody sacrifice by slaughtering uh, animals and by giving us uh, a holy sacrifice for the Lord or for the deity. So uh, the bloody and the unbloody sacrifice uh, uh, types of sacrifice. The unbloody sacrifice has four parts, uh, the holocaust and or whole burned offering, whole burned offering, or in Hebrew term, olaha, olaha. The second part of uh, the bloody sacrifice is sin offering, sin offering, sin offering, katat, in Hebrew term. The third one is the guilt offering, the guilt offering, or asham, 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 or guilt offering. The fourth one is the peace offering or shalom or shalom. So the, these are the type of offerings that uh, the Israelites uh, did during their time or the narrative of the Old Testament books indicates. Uh, the, the next one is the aim of uh, sacrificial acts. Uh, aim of sacrificial act. Uh, as I told you bef before, it indicates the total Submission, the total surrender of uh, somebody to his deity, or in uh, according to our class, the Old Testament people, the Old Testament people, the Israelites submit themselves. They indicate by sacrifice their submission, their surrender, uh, and also we see in Old Testament time uh, the human sacrifice in Levite 27, Exodus 22 and uh, Joshua 6.1 and number 31 and number 40, uh, Genesis 22 by uh, Abraham to offering uh, Isaac as a sacrifice. And Judges 11, uh, there is a sacrifice, human sacrifice. Sacrifice occupies a central place in the worship life of the Old Testament. The believing, the believing community uh, performs sacrifice as an expression of dependence on God, as an acknowledgement of guilt before God as a covenant relationship and as a mark of fellowship with the deity and the community. The priests play the, the pivotal role in the, in the ritual of which he is comp compensated with offerings and proceeds from sacrifice. The sacrifice acceptable to God Today is not the presentation of animals or agricultural products as we saw in all the Testament time during the time of Moses and during the time of Aaronic Aaron, uh, they gave uh, agricultural products and animal products. But now in the New Testament, a humble submission in faithful obedience to supreme sacrifice on behalf of humanity made by our Lord Jesus Christ, which has uh, abrogated ever other form of ritual sacrifice. There is no ritual activity is necessary. Jesus did every activity that we saw in Old Testament. It is a type what we see in Old Testament scripture. Now, through Jesus Christ, through the power and the resurrection, from, through the days of Jesus Christ, uh, antitype, the antitype, the, the right one, the, the correct one. So Jesus once and for all sacrificed every sacrifice instead of us the, through substitutional death. So now we are going to see about redemption, what redemption is. Redemption, redeeming mean. What does it mean redemption? By the way, the Bible speaks about redemption. In all area, redemption means, uh, 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 I think, it is the intervention of God. And let us see the definition of redemption in your uh, material. is a, a comprehensive term used in the Old Testament to reform, refer to the special intervention of God for the salvation of mankind. It is a special intervention of God for the salvation of humanity, a special intervention of God for the salvation of humanity. Uh, therefore, other ideas closely related to the primary concept of redemption, which 
relate to the necessary for redemption and it is various aspects and to the effects of the humanity of God's grace in the life of the uh, uh, believing community. Redemption, redemption stories in the Old Testament. The day of redemption story in the Old Testament. There is a history in a redem redemption story in the Old Testament. It is, uh, as I told you before, redemption is a, a special intervention of God for salvation of humankind. A special intervention. There is a great intervention we see in the war between Israel and the Palestine. And also the war between uh, the people of Israel during uh, they, uh, they were living in uh, Egypt. Uh, Pharaoh in one side, Pharaoh on the one side, and uh, Moses in the other side, Moses and his people. So God intervened there. God helped them to won the war between two people. Uh, intervention is God's salvation, God's uh, intervention in human history. A redemption history in the Old Testament. Redemption is the Old Testament. Uh, is, uh, uh, our Israelites with Egyptian, as I told you, it is in Psalm 166 6 to 12, we see uh, history of uh, God's intervention during the time of uh, uh, Israelites. They were under great slave, slavery by Pharaoh and his uh, government. So God intervened in each and every situation of, uh, in every and each situation uh, during their uh, bondage in order to uh, save them. God intervened. God brings a leader for them, Moses, and he spoke to the government of, for the Pharaoh. So uh, we see uh, God's intervention during the Exodus time. The second one is the atonement of uh, money paid by Israel at Exodus 30, 11 up to 12. The kinsman redeemer, Levite, Lev, 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 Levite 25, 47 up to 49. The deliverance of a debater from prison, Isaiah 49, 88 up to 3, 10, 61, 1 up to 3. And also the day of atonement, the cleanse the priests and people. In the uh, day of atonement, they, uh, the priests cleanse uh, the priests and the people. Uh, and also the role of fasting. Fasting is the abstinence from food for a spiritual purpose. It is abstinence, abstaining, eating and drinking uh, for the spiritual uh, purpose, for the spiritual benefits, uh, to gain something from God. Okay, uh, redemption. Redemption uh, remains the highest attempt in the Old Testament to redeem mankind. The Day of Atonement was the climax of redemption, redemption act, uh, active activities in the Old Testament. The priest was required to offer atoning sacrifice for himself, the people, and the worship places. The Day of Atonement was observed with fasting, which was only annual fasting day commanded by Moses, uh, according to Levite 16. Old Testament prophets acquired any sacrifice, sacrificial that lacked uh, repentance and uh, since, sincere faith in God. Hence, their attack on outward re religiously. The Day of Atonement was only effective if the people participate in it under genuine repentance and faith. However, redemption in the entity took a different understanding. The days of Jesus Christ on the cross has abrogated once for all annual sacrifice for sin required on the Day of Atonement. This is the position of Christianity. Jesus Christ sacrificed for us once and for all. He redeemed us through, through his blood, bloodshed. 
Jesus shedded his blood in order to bless us, in order to redeem us from eternal judgment, from this dark world, from this evil world, from this crooked world. The blood of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, the death of Jesus is the cause, is the reason for our redemption. He redeemed us. He intervened us when we are under great sin. When we are under great curse, when we are under great darkness. So, Jesus portrays salvation through his death and resurrection for us. We redeem from our place, from our dark place, from our dead flesh. We lost, but we are found through his death and resurrection, through his suffering. So we expect that Jesus' second coming also uh, is another way of our redemption for our eternity. So now we are going to say it, uh, we are going to see about uh, uh, the next topic or the next title. It is called mission. All the Bible from Genesis one up Genesis one after Revelation 22, indicates what mission is. Mission. God's relation with humanity. God's desire with humanity. God's hunger. As the, as the Bible speaks about, speaks in Genesis 1 and 2, there is no any uh, sin and evil so that humanity has wonderful and amazing relation with God in Eden. But because of sin, humanity corrupted, society corrupted, nature corrupted. So God stretches his hand again by the covenant in Genesis 3, 15 to Abraham, to Adam uh, uh, he promised to save humanity, to save Adam again. So, uh, especially uh, when we think of mission, uh, the first missionary, when we think of mission, when we study mission, is God himself. He came to save humanity from heaven. He came to earth in order to save humanity, in order to save, in order to change our situation in order to bring us from curse to life, blessing, in order to bring us from death to life. So, God is the first missionary. Abraham is another missionary. God met Abraham. Met Abraham. So, uh, here, uh, Old Testament hinges around God's purpose for electing Israel, which is pre precisely to bring blessing ultimately to all nations. God met Israel through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob, through Joseph. Through Joseph, God made people, made a nation. And this nation came to Canaan, the promised land. There God put and gave them place to live and to serve. God as a priest and as a king. God gave them a responsibility. God gave them a mission for the people of Israel. They live a life as a salt and as a light. So, this is the call of Israel. God brings blessing ultimately. This blessing, this old blessing God gave for Israel in order to bless nations around them. There are different kinds of nations. When Joshua conquered the promised land, he occupied almost certain one nation. The aim and the goal and the purpose of God here is to show God, to glorify God, to teach the people of the pagan people who God is. 
through the people of Israel. This is a calling, this is an election of God as a king and as a, as a priest. The Bible is the united testimony of God's purpose to redeem the whole world. The purpose of God is to redeem the whole world, all nations. God bless all nations. God bless each individual. During the Israel, during the Old Testament time, the purpose of God's blessing each and every Israelite is in order to bless other people, the people around them. It is the extension, of, it is because of the extension of God to other nations. To redeem the whole world. God chose Israel not only to bless Israel, in order to bless other nations, the nation around Israel. Israel related to other nations. Genesis 12, 1. Abraham. God has a promise to Abraham to give a seed. I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. I will make you a blessing to other nations. The nation of around Israel. So, Abraham, the blessing of Abraham is, must be extended to other nations. A channel of blessing. Abraham is a channel of blessing. In New Testament, the church is a channel of blessing. Every believer is a channel of blessing. We are a channel. We have to understand the term mission in this way. Missionary is a person. In Old Testament, Israel, Israel, where Israel was a missionary people, a missionary nation to reach other nations. That is the purpose and plan of God. But Israel couldn't accomplish that mission. In Exodus 19, 4, 4 up to 6, God promised, God gave a, a law for Israel to live a life that is worthy of God, to make them as a priest and as a king. So, the definition of mission here. The concept of God's mission in the Old Testament hinges around God's purpose for electing Israel, which is precisely to bring blessing ultimately to all nations. All nations, not nations. The Bible is a united testimony to God's purpose to redeem the whole world. So, this unit will survey the concept of God's mission to Old Testament to other nations in the Old Testament under God's plan for other nations in the Pentateuch. When we see the Pentateuch, when we see the Exodus, I mean Genesis, God was trying to, to show up himself. He revealed himself for Adam day and night, day and night, for Abel, for Moses, for Noah. for Abraham, for Joseph, for Jacob, for Isaac, in order to understand him more and more progressively. God's plan for other nations in the Pentateuch. When Abraham go to, when Isaac went to Egypt, the program of God, the purpose of God, to show himself through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. God's plan for other nations in the prophets, in the prophetic book, the prophets, they are the oracle of the law. They are the oracle of the law. They show who God is. 
They proclaim the majesty of God. They proclaim the power of God to the people of Israel, to the kings. Not only for the people of Israel, to other people also. For the Gentile people and the Gentile kings. During the war between the Israel and other nations, God depicts, God portrays himself, displays himself. And God's plan for other nations in the writings. In the writings. We see it in Psalm 2, Psalm 22, and Psalm 67. They show how the intent of God is for humanity, how the intent of God for the nation. For the tribe, especially Psalm 2, Psalm 22, and Psalm 67. So the next one is uh, the community. Community. Community, meaning of community in the Old Testament. Solidarity thinking in the Old Testament. Freedom and bondage of the individual. Solidarity in the monarchical period. Political collapse in the here has the point that there is no difference. God bless individual in order to, for the sake of community. The blessing of community is for the individual. It is directly related to each other. So God bless each individual for the sake of the community. God's recovery plan for humanity is not limited to the individual, but includes the community. For what happens in the community affects the individual. The Old Testament took time to give regulation on how to the individual in the community should relate with one another. So, after community, the last section, the last lesson is uh, the last lesson is prophecy, the method of prophecy, the message of prophecy, uh, according to prophetic message. Uh, Robert summarized in five ways values. They introduce, they introduce a new conception of requirements. They proclaim the notion of that the Lord is the Lord, uh, God. They announce that the Lord was a ruler of history. God is a ruler of history. The prophet's message is to indicate for all nations God is the ruler of history and God is the ruler of everyone. So, thank you so much.